Hey everyone, it's Evgeny, and we're doing episode 6 of Portfolio Reviews here at 500px HQ. Today with us is Nuno Silva, Director of Content at 500px Prime. Hi everybody. And as always, we'll get through a bunch of works today. We'll here to give your honest feedback. We're not here to sugarcoat. So we'll go as honestly as possible. And uh, Nuno here is to help us figure out which photos are actually sellable on Firefox Prime, what we're looking as buyers and uh, what the buyers are looking for and what we're looking for as a company. So it will help you to get uh, better as a photographer commercially and will help you sell more of your works. Great. Yeah, we'll also help you try to figure out what markets uh, are a good fit for your work. So, Absolutely. So with that, we'll get started. And our first work is by Alexander Muller, and it's called Sunrise Number no. 1. So, no, no, what do you think about this shot? Uh, I like it. Love the colors. Um, you have the classic dual tone of the blues with the yellows, um, which is very complementary colors, uh, always works well. Um, nice golden hour here and I like the fact that I can actually see some of the green detail in the grass in the foreground. Um, so right away I think it's it's pretty nice um, but there's no real uh, focal point here. I don't it's just kind of just this plain field and the, the line of trees in the background. Uh, I would love it if there was a barn or even certain reeds of grass or something uh, to draw my eye to a specific point. So I guess what you're telling me is that there's no consistent story to mm -hmm. that photo, that it's just a plain landscape mm -hmm. and it's good, but we want something more to that, right? We want to like make it more interesting, get a barn, get a person there, maybe a horse. Mm -hmm. They're not mutually exclusive, yeah. could be a person with a horse. It's something to make it memorable, something to really stand out and for me to remember, hey, that photo of that. Like I would never say that great background photo of, the field, um, right. you know, there should be some kind of something to draw my eye, some kind of compositional elements. The clouds here work well in that regard, but then it doesn't really line up with the lines in the grass. Um, so yeah, it's just missing a little something, but otherwise the colors, the processing, um, the overall composition where he's broken the horizon right in the center of the frame, I think that technically works well. Actually, I was about to comment on that, mm -hmm. uh, that the rule of thirds definitely doesn't apply to this no. photo. No. And I don't know if that's a good thing. I feel that, uh, you know, something is probably more important here. And I want to say, like, I really like this skies, but at the same time, I want to say, like, this is not the most amazing skies I've ever seen. So I would actually focus on the uh, foreground, on the grass. That would be interesting yeah. to see. Maybe this would change the entire composition if you actually did obey the rule of thirds. Maybe our... Uh, comments would be a little bit different if the lines lined up a little bit better and there was actually like a focal point being drawn to with the lines. Right. I think, you know, it makes sense to break the rules if you know uh, mm -hmm. why you're breaking them. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any particular reason to break it here. Yeah, I just if symmetrically for me, it, it worked. Um, but I agree that if he, he had actually followed the rule of thirds, there may have been a little bit more here. So it'd be interesting to find out. So our second work is by Peter Mayo, and it's another landscape. So we're looking at a cave with some really interesting natural light flowing in. And the work to you, Nuno. Well, the first thing that I notice is that the light, although natural, still feels kind of unnatural. I don't know what it is. I, I'm used to seeing these photos in a sort of a different way where the there's a lot more contrast, where the rays of light are a lot... More standing out. Right? Yeah, more standing out. And here, the, the rock face of the cave is really lit up. I, I don't know if he's flashed some, some strobes on it or, or what has brought all this light in where the rays of light are still even visible. There's something weird about it. I, have, I can't put my finger on it, but it doesn't have that, um, that typical look that I would expect. Right. So there is a slight chance that it might be photoshopped. And that becomes really tricky in our portfolio reviews is that some photos are heavily photoshopped, some are not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we assume things that are not, right? So we are wrong mm -hmm. from time to time. And it's really interesting just to do the guess, to the, almost like do the guesswork to figure out, was it Photoshopped yeah. or was it real? Or like, what is the story behind it? So uh, for me, uh, you know, this photo is again, kind of like plays on the, on the level of how interesting it is. Yeah. And it is, I would say moderately interesting. This is really nice location. 
I feel like there is not enough uh, almost like story or location itself. Like the only thing that makes it work is the light. Remove the light and this is just a cave. Yeah, it's a badly lit cave. If you take out those those rays of light, it's just kind of this harsh shadows. Um, the colors themselves are kind of boring. They're kind of boring. Um, you know, you got some yellowy brown rocks. It's not uh, the most attractive thing. And from a, a buyer's perspective, um, why would I use this photo? What do I need this photo for? What is this photo trying to convey? Um, and again, it just the angle and the lighting just doesn't seems unnatural and something that I, I wouldn't find particularly useful as a commercial um, buyer. May, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe there's a lot of Photoshop done to this. And had it been processed differently, had it been given a mood with some color tinting or, or mm -hmm. the removal of the the HDR element, maybe this is uh, HDR. Um, then maybe it would have made a little bit more sense and a little bit more sellable uh, from that perspective. Uh, I totally agree here. So our next shot is uh, is called Lotus Temple 2. And this is really interesting architectural shot. I think I've seen quite a few of those photos of this temple. I'm always fascinated by this location and I, I, I find it fascinating. Just like it's really great for any architectural photographer. First of all, you see the striking colors and the symmetry of the overall shot. So this is like really well done photo. And, uh, you know, looking at it right now, I don't think I can add or remove anything from that. Maybe other than slightly tight crop from the bottom, but that seems like the only slightest change that I would do to this photo. Yeah, it's it, interesting you said symmetry because I had to look at it carefully to see, is this a mirror? It, it's done really well as far as the composition, because I actually have to double check to make sure that it isn't just a mirrored uh, image. He's lined it up quite perfectly. Um, and your comment about cropping at the bottom, bringing it up, mm -hmm. um, maybe even bringing it down just to see what that corner is, because you've cut. he's cut off the corner at a very odd angle. So if you cropped it up, I would hate to cut off that second corner at the very bottom of that uh, pool. But I see that you, you know what is happening with yeah. the corner, so it's not something uh, it's not the main part of the of this photo, right? We're we're totally nitpicking uh, at this point. It's a beautiful photo, um, as Evgeny said. The colors are, are gorgeous, um, and I think he's really nailed the symmetry and the composition here uh, in the photo. So, from the uh, uh, perspective of selling this photo, is it sellable content? I think so. You know, this is obviously a landmark, um, and it's a great architectural shot. Um, so, tourism, travel, maybe even the uh, the owners of the building would like to show, kind of showcase this. Um, where is this? You... I uh, actually don't know, but it's in Delhi, India. Yeah, it's it a well. beautiful building. Um, yeah, from a from a sellable standpoint, it's it's a gorgeous shot of a landmark, an iconic building, and I think uh, from that aspect, it sh it is very uh, very well done. So the next photo that we have is called uh, Hari by Dean Peaver. And Dean advised us that he has a really thick skin so we can rip this photo apart. And so we're happy to do this. Uh, you know, when I look at this photo, the first thing that I thought to myself is that it's a film shot. You know, the colors, the green, the um, kind of like cropping, all reminds me of 35mm film. And then I look down at the exit data and it's digital, right? So it's shot in Canada and it seems really natural, but at the same time, it feels really flat. So the colors like this uh, haven't been used, uh, or at least like not used on 500px too often. So we usually see a lot rich colors, a lot more saturation to every every shot. So looking at this, it feels like we're going back to the 90s, uh, and it's probably a good thing. But at the same, my eye already got used to seeing all the like well processed, noise free, highly saturated photos. That looking at this kind of like made me go back to the 90s. Yeah, so looking at this shot, what I'm seeing is some an unfortunate circumstance of the uh, the environment that this was shot in. So, um, you know, we have some brown grass, some yellow dead grass, and because of the lack of post-processing, it's all kind of coming out. Uh, it's a very real shot, maybe too real, just kind of an unattractive color scheme, if we can be, if we can kind of nitpick this. Um, but as far as nature and landscape photographers, you don't want to go too far uh, and make it an untruthful capture of the scene. You don't want to pretend that Algonquin Park looks different 
uh, than it actually does, but maybe boosting the saturations, enhancing the colors that are already there to give it more of a complementary warmer tone um, might have actually done this well. I would have also maybe just dropped the highlights down just a little bit. The, the nose on the front there, um, it's just it's really bright. It's kind of sticking out at me. Um, so there's some kind of post-processing that I think would have turned this shot into something a little bit more attractive and maybe this, the sharpness seems to have been kicked up a lot as well. Right. Uh, another thing, obviously, Dean uh, dropped that watermark. Uh, I think we, you know, every episode we talk about horrible watermarks. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. Yeah. We do see some, you know, nice ones, not very often, but, we, um, you know, I understand why people put the watermarks on. They want to make sure that their, their work is protected, and if somebody does... Uh, clip this off the internet that they get some kind of attribution to it. And I think there's uh, a lot more subtle ways of, of doing it. And this is um, just very kind of prominent in your face. And, um, you know, it's just kind of a boring font. Um, so, yeah, look around, see if there's some kind of creative solutions um, to get that attribution that you want. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. I hate this watermark. Yeah, that's why I don't watermark my photos. So our next shot is called Merced River, and the author asks, what are the technical flaws with this photo, and how can he improve the composition? Um, you know, we see a lot of HDR. I think it's a very popular uh, trend. So right away I'm thinking there is some kind of HDR, some kind of clarify filter put on this. Right away I'm seeing the haloing uh, on the pine trees. <clears throat> you see the haloing on the, the horizon of the tree line there. Um, so that right away is quite distracting. It looks like a technical flaw. If that's you know, especially what uh, what they asked us to review. Um, otherwise, I think the water uh, is done well. The reflections are, are are quite nice. But again, that this top half of this photo uh, does look over processed. Uh, I think pretty much the same. So it's over, uh, clarity is too high, and the processing of the sky is a little bit too rough. And you know, looking overall. The composition is good. Uh, the only biggest technical flaw is coming to this spot during the day time. Instead of waiting for uh, morning hours or evening hours, uh, this becomes kind of like more touristy snapshot. Mm -hmm. I know that it's not always possible to be there on sunrise or sunset, but I think this is the, the must for all the landscape photos. Like going there during midday, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like I have lots of photos like this, I wouldn't even publish them because most of the time it's just not right. To be a great landscape photographer, you you scope out the location for a long time. You sit there, you wait, you wait for the light to hit the perfect spot, and then you take the shot. Um, shots like this just look like he was kind of moving around, snap, 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 around the lake, um, just trying to find that spot. And this could have been a great setup shot where he's trying to figure that out. Um, but it's yeah, like you said, it's not quite there, and waiting for that right light would have been essential uh, to really make this shot. Um, but again, I think the thing that totally kills it is the clarify or high pass filter, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, this this would have been a much more attractive shot had he not gone to that point with the uh, with the post processing. Yeah, it just becomes really natural. So uh, fix that, and we can review it once again. The location though is beautiful. So totally. Merced River. Very famous, uh, lots of really great shots from there. Uh, usually, I would suggest just like go on Final FX, obviously, Google Merced River, see what other people are shooting, see what the location is, what the lens is, and come back there. And if we're going to talk about a commercial standpoint uh, on this image, um, just bringing some kind of prop or again, some kind of uh, point of focus, something to build a story around this. Uh, even if you don't have a model or you don't have any releases, uh, maybe just even a canoe, a fishing rod, anything that would give this location some kind of context. Um, if this river is famous for fishing, then a fishing rod is perfect. You kind of you set the mood, you set the tone, you set the context um, that a buyer would want to buy this photo. Um, sometimes location is just is not enough, and you need to just push it a little bit further and give it a little bit more story. Our next shot is called the Morning Tide, and the author Scott asks. Uh, what do we think about composition and post-processing and whether the photo is too painterly 
and you know when I first uh, read the question I looked at the photo I'm like yeah it actually looks like a painting a little bit but at the same time there's nothing to suggest that it's actually painting or has been anything done with that to make it more uh, like a painting so that's a good thing I think like overall being that painterly as, as Scott mentioned is probably a good thing for this photo I really like the colors of the bottom part it's absolutely the right exposure for um, and timing for, for that kind of flow so you capture that perfectly the top part concerns me a little bit the skies seem a little rough so the processing on that I can see a bit of noise and a little bit of the post-processing there there's a comment was asking if it was too painterly and I'm wondering if there was some kind of effect applied to give it that kind of painted feeling because I, I kind of see it um, my concern uh, from a commercially from a commercial licensing standpoint is in large res at full res at 100% would we see some really artificial textures here if this was printed out in very large scale? Would the artificial texture be uh, be more prominent? From the thumbnail, from even a full screen here on the, on the laptop, um, it looks fine. It looks great, just as you said. The colors look really good. It doesn't look uh, that unnatural. It looks like a really well done um, long exposure photo with very lucky streaks that have happened with the with the water flow. Uh, usually a shot like this it would just be either all white or there'd be some kind of you wouldn't get the very lucky streaking um, that he's gotten here which is just fantastic it looks like you know hairs like like paint lines uh, almost so so that part's great the colors work really well the colors are very complimentary uh, and the pro and the processing that he's done to bring those out works very well awesome so from the composition standpoint I think it's uh, it's good as well uh, it might I might go a little more wide angle and get a little closer, but it's more of a personal preference mm -hmm. to that. So I think it works well here with the rocks uh, on the foreground and on the left. I think it works well. Yeah, I think it works well. It's a very pretty shot. It uh, can be used commercially for uh, kind of interesting backgrounds that talk about uh, you know, inspirational uh, sayings or some, some kind of inspirational advert. Um, where this photo could be a, a great backdrop to that because it is interesting enough. There's enough going on in the photo um, that I would say it, it does work. My, my only comment again is just to double check this at 100% magnification and make sure that that post-processing hasn't gone so far to the point where a commercial buyer would um, be disappointed when they got the full resolution image. Our next shot is called On the Balcony by Patrick and Patrick asks us a question. I would love to know what you think about the shot. I find it hard to critique self-portraits and read whether I'm connecting with the viewer or not. It's quite intense. Um, he is definitely in my face uh, with the with the selfie here. It looks like he's sort of held the camera in front of him, um, which is unfortunate. I think when you're doing a, um, a self-portrait uh, like this, it should be a much more interesting composition. It shouldn't be so... Um, in your face. In your face, it, it, in your face you get like another if, face. If, if somebody yeah. was sitting across from me in a table looking at me like this, I'd, I'd be worried <laughs> that something was going on. It, it just, it's a very intense expression. It's very, very close up, very kind of, I, I can't say it enough, it's a very intense portrait. But that is the question, does it connect with you? And I think like you're saying that it's really intense, Yeah. and by this I think it actually connects with you. But do but I, I want it to connect? with me in this way and I don't think he's I don't think Patrick was trying to make this kind of threatening intense connection with me I think he was trying to uh, peer into the viewers eyes uh, and maybe in a more thoughtful way than than it came across in this if that is the if that was the intention then no because I see a threatening guy <laughs> looking at me as well so I would love to have a bit of distance between you Patrick yes the, the shoulders are also up. You see there that it's, it's a very kind of tense posture that he's got. So, yeah, maybe step back, set your camera on a timer. Um, there's a lot of really great ways to, to figure out what the focal point will be if you set um, your camera on a timer. What do you think of the post-processing? It is a film shot, so we see that it's been processed, uh, shot with Polaroid, and uh, has uh, all the special effects done manually mm -hmm. with film. So. Uh, you know, this I really like. I really like that it's uh, a thoughtful process to make this shot. So I think there is something going on with this shot for sure. Yeah, I would have loved to see even some um, some kind of context to the photo. Um, because if you have the surrounding uh, elements, then you have more of a story about 
who this character is and um, and why I should connect with him and how I can uh, empathize with him and how I can relate to him. Um, and I think that would be essential. I think this gave me a thought is that, you know, write a description and write thoughtful descriptions. Think about, there's a couple of shots uh, that we reviewed in the past where where the headline or the title of the photo doesn't connect with the photo at all. So uh, I think the, this is actually one of the other shots. It's called On the Balcony. We don't see the balcony here. We yeah. see we see you, Patrick, here. So uh, I feel that a thoughtful title and a thoughtful description that actually tells us why we should care about the shot helps a lot to communicate the message that you want yeah, to And to give it that context. Right. Yeah, I agree. Our next uh, shot is by Eric, and it's called Fermoil. And Eric asks us a question. Uh, Hi, I would love to critique my, one of my images as po if possible. I'm a bit of a purist, and I tend to avoid Photoshop and use Lightroom minimally. Feel free to choose one of the photos. So, you know, I, I have to be really honest. I picked this photo because I really like it. Uh, I like pretty much everything about this. The soft tones and the colors and the reflection of the clouds and the long exposure, uh, it just, it's just really nice. So uh, I think it's, it's my favorite, and uh, I don't really want to critique that. I just want to leave it like that. So, <laughs> it's, up to, to <laughs> so, it. so it's up to you to go and trash it. Well, you know, I'm going to have a really hard time, um, especially because of what, uh, of what Eric said about this photo and, and about his style of shooting. The fact that this um, is minimally processed is impressive to me. Um, I like that he's actually sat there and, and figured out a great location with beautiful colors, waited for the light to hit at the right moment that he can get this kind of um, lighting and exposure and color and saturation um, is, is really interesting. Um, you know, if we're here to nitpick, there's this little tiny thing over here uh, on the left-hand side, the reflection of some kind of building or something. Uh, but really, you know, this is an awesome shot. It's incredible, um, very impressive uh, style of shooting and uh, like we were talked about earlier with landscapes, it's about finding the right spot at the right time and waiting for to get the shot. Uh, and obviously, I think Eric's hit hit the mark here with this one. And I think what's important is that you know if you're in the right spot with the right light, and uh, uh, it it doesn't matter which camera you use. It doesn't. It it could be an iPhone shot for what we care. Like obviously, you cannot do the long exposure just yet, but you know it's it's all about the uh, the right place and the right time That's and right. and then whatever camera you have with you will produce you really great photos yeah it's really cool how the texture on the uh ground is still and sharp and then the texture of the sky is moving and and uh and vibrant um so yeah really great choice of uh shooting style and uh and timing it's too sad that we didn't have anything uh bad to say about this shot Maybe next time we'll review another one of his photos. Uh, our next shot is called Red Deer, and it comes from William. This is a pretty impressive shot. What I like about the shot is that it's actually kind of like landscape format almost. So it's really wide crop, and, and I really like about this. I think it, it's just the right cropping here because the legs of deer disappears in the flowers and in the uh, bushes and it just like cuts right there. So I think it's really good cropping here. I don't have anything bad to say about this one as well. I think I started on a positive <laughs> note and then I just want to go on and say that I really like the a bit of noisiness and I think it actually adds to the photo. It, it looks like a film shot and I think it looks really natural. Uh, so again, you know, it's in your court, uh, say, something, well, say something critical. Considering the, the bear shot that we saw earlier, I think this is a great photo to bring up now and, and maybe do a comparison between these two photos um, and the lighting and the color um, differences in the two photos that are somewhat similar where you have uh, wildlife in a field um, and you can see the differences in the shot. Here we have uh, a beautiful depth of field um, that's highlighted uh, quite well. The, the bouquet in the background is gorgeous. Um, I like the, the purple uh, color it seems to complement well with the brown of the the deer and the green in the background so all the colors are really working really well here uh, I think the sharpness is at the right point the depth of field is a lot better than the bear photo I hear you it's just like everything's perfect what I really like is is the tonality is that you know it's it's in one kind of like 
ever, like all the tones are well balanced. The background is not overblown or too dark. Uh, it's probably just again the right timing and the right spot, mm -hmm. just being in the right place with the right light. And it's probably more like overcast, like you know we don't see any shadows there, so it's it's good lighting for that. Uh, yeah, the shot with the bears uh, was probably shot at a very bright time of day, and here we have a nice overcast natural soft box effect that's happened with with the deer um, and it's a very lucky shot to get the deer to give you this beautiful profile uh, when it did so tell me how it's going to do commercially commercially it's a striking shot you know we have a beautiful uh, profile of a deer with a beautiful set of antlers um, so from a you know for a nature um, perspective this could sell well um, if you want it to sell in in that market Make sure that you you tag and the, you know, keyword the file properly. Make sure you get the the species of animal, the location, the maybe even the time of year. Um, these are all important things for uh, people that are buying nature photos. They want to know where it was taken, what it's of, uh, and they want those exact details. How do you track down the module release from from the guy? Well, you have to get the deer's parents to sign the release. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we're just kidding. Um, it's a beautiful shot. It looks like it was taken in a natural park. Uh, the only issue you'd have with the releases here was if this was in some kind of private zoo. Um, but, you know, an outdoor shot like this, I think, would do quite well uh, commercially if it was tagged and keyworded properly. It would find the market it needs. So, our next photo is called On Top of the World by Anzer. And he asked a really important question. How do I make my photos less boring? It's an easy answer, Anzer. If you are in New York, don't go there during the day. Wait for uh, evening hours or wait for the morning hours and just shoot it dur during the, uh, the golden hour or the blue hour. You know, it's a black and white shot, mind that, but still, you'll get just different shadows, you'll get more contrast, you'll get more dynamic range out of your photo. And it, oh, like, you probably wouldn't need to use black and white because the colors will be so beautiful. Yeah, the thing, the one thing I'll compliment him on in this shot is you, the depth. Uh, that you see thanks to the, the smog or the fog of the city. Um, I do appreciate that and I think if you did shoot it uh, you know, way earlier in the day where you'd have that morning fog or maybe even later in the evening, that could have been more pronounced, more interesting um, and may have worked. I don't mind the black and white element of it. I think it gives it kind of a, a cool, timeless kind of quality for such an iconic landscape, um, which is great, but maybe the composition is a little off here. The alignment of the buildings um, don't really jive, they seem almost random. So the, as far as composition and, and centering your photo or even applying the rule of thirds to it, I think uh, may have been take, could have been taken better into consideration. Um, I do like the idea of the, the very wide crop. I think that's kind of a good idea, but maybe the execution wasn't, um, wasn't perfect on this one. And I, one more thing that I also enjoy about this is that you can see the curved uh, landscape, the curved tone, which kind of makes you feel like you really step back a really wide shot, which is which is interesting, uh, but again, it, the curve is not in the center of the frame, so it, it kind of throws me off from a, a compositional standpoint. You know, I think more on, on the general note, uh, if you're, it's probably shot from the rock, mm -hmm. and if you're going there to shoot during evening hours, make sure that you have ample of time ahead of you, because it's going to take you one or two hours to get to the top. So if you're shooting for or aiming for a sunset, um, get there two hours earlier to get there. But yeah, it just, uh, you know, for me personally, there's not enough contrast in the shot. Mm -hmm. I can see that the, uh, the sky is like that. It's the, the most that you can do. So there's just like no contrast in the skies. I can see why, why, it, why it's black and white, just because it was pretty boring uh, in, uh, in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think they're just the execution here is it, it just missed the mark. Our last photo in this episode is called The Man and His Mustache by Igor. And Igor asks us a question How would you compose the frame and what is your overall impression of the photo? First of all, when I see this shot, I really like the, uh, you know, the overall scene. I think uh, having a photo of such a standing out person is pretty cool. So I really like those street portraits um, like this. Uh, the black and white processing is really good as well. It just kind of like, you know, it is, the clarity here is used very appropriately. 
right? It's like it's over sharpened, but because there is a lot of hair and mustache, it just like makes it really striking. Yeah, and well, you don't. It doesn't look over processed. You don't get the the haloing that uh, we saw in some of the other shots. Uh, my comment on this is. Uh, I love this guy. I love this character. I love his uh, his mood and his expression. I think um, he's a wonderful subject to shoot. I love how he's a little gritty. Um, the hairs are all uh, astray, and I think that just makes the character. Um, unfortunately, though, I, I don't think this is very flattering uh, for this individual. The, the jowls and the chin um, really stand out. I know that that's part of uh, who he is, uh, but I think changing his pose or maybe moving around him a little bit more may have uh, gotten you a, m a little bit more flattering. Uh, but that's not a beauty or a fashion photo shoot. So you're looking at the journalism type street mm -hmm. photography. And the only thing that I don't like here is the cropping. So I think it's actually cropped, uh, should be cropped the other way, right? So like more f space on the right and less space on the left, or like more centered. And it, it would make photo more lively. I would say. But I really like it. You know, I like that it's actually unflattering. Yeah. I like it that he is a character and he is a really vivid character at that. And he is willing to be that. I'm sure he is okay with that photo. Yeah, the eyes are just striking in this photo. Uh, this guy has obviously a lot of character. Um, maybe I just want to see more. Uh, I'd love to see more of this, uh, of this individual. I think uh, as a subject, as a, photo uh, a photo subject, uh, he's very interesting. There's a lot of wonderful lines and colors and textures um, in this character uh, that are worth exploring. So tell me, uh, commercially, can this be sold? Commercially, with a release, obviously, um, you know, it might have a market as how, you know, being real people, real authentic characters um, would be interesting. But you, in this case here, it would be a little bit of a harder sell um, because there's, it's lacking a little bit of context. Um, it could be it could sell as maybe as a testimonial photo is what they call them a testimonial photo. We have a bunch of kind of portraits of different people then um, to symbolize um, you know an audience or um, or somebody uh, who would be interested in a product or a service or something like that. Uh, so from that regard, it's it's done well. But I think um, there's there's an opportunity here with this kind of character that. I feel that this guy would be interesting enough to give us a little bit more and to give us, if this was a small businessman, uh, a kind of an artist, um, you know, there's obviously an interesting background going on here uh, and maybe even zooming out just a little bit more to give it to some Would I be correct to say that, you know, if you would have some kind of like, if he would have some kind of like tools or we would know that he uh, works in a bakery uh, or that uh, he has uh, some kind of like, a workshop or um, he's a tradesman that would make uh, to sell this? Yeah, it would make it much more appealing and um, would give it that necessary context to find um, a market so when a buyer is looking at this photo they can build a story around this individual uh, even for a testimonial shop because you might want to say um, that a small business person would be interested in this product that I'm uh, Yeah, like I'm small business owner, uh, things like that. Yeah, for sure. And again, he's a real person. This is not a, a model uh, that's faking being a tradesman or a small business person. Um, this is a real guy with an authentic, uh, natural expression, um, which is just fantastic and commercially uh, is very, very appealing. Just need to run and ask for a release and hope that he says yes. For his, sure. His eyes say, say yes. It, it would definitely be worth it. It would definitely be worth uh, reaching out to this individual and asking for a model release. Awesome. So uh, with this, we have covered enough works for this episode. Thanks a lot uh, to everyone who submitted their photos. You can always submit more on iso.fahandpex.com. We'll actually set up a Fahandpex group where you can submit more photos for each episode and other people can upload the work so that we know uh, what photos are uh, people want to get reviewed. So stay tuned for that. It's, it's coming really soon. With that, thanks, Nuna, for participating as always. Always a pleasure. Thank you me. for having me. It's, uh, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you.